I went by train, and travelling from Paddington Station, I was delighted to discover that my train was called, yes, Paddington Bear. The journey takes less than two hours, and for this jaunt I used the OM5 and the 12-45 Pro Lens, as it was just a planned day trip of six hours in the Welsh capital, so I travelled light. I had held shooting on program at 200 ISO to maintain commercial quality, and will explain why as the show progresses. Anyway, time to enter Cardiff Castle. It is not far from the station, that is, after a visit to the pub. The castle dates back to Roman times, when Cardiff was a backwater of the Empire. The keep is Norman, but what will fascinate photographers most is its fantasy gothic interior, created by Lord Bute, the third Marquess of Bute, who spent huge sums lavishing care in every corner. The gothic design may not please everyone, but your camera will love it, and so did I. Experience is my greatest skill. I have photographed many stately homes and church interiors, gaining knowledge every time, which helps me now with the many challenges inside the castle. I cannot teach experience, or expect you or anybody to just press a few buttons on a camera expecting instant success. One of the greatest virtues of the OM5 is its image stabilization. It is utterly amazing. Unlike the 12-100 Pro, the 12-45 Pro lens does not have its own stabiliser. That didn't matter. I found myself taking sharp photographs handheld at one second, relying solely on the camera, which you had to do inside the castle. I spot meter everything using my eyes. With the electronic finder, as judge, I find it very creative but requires practice. I tend to underexpose to avoid blown out highlights that can't be corrected in Adobe Lightroom. And believe you me, they look awful. But you can correct shadows. Many photographers confuse auto with program. It is not the same thing. In low light, the aperture will default to its widest, here f4, which can be altered to a smaller aperture. You can still adjust white balance, which I leave on auto for correction to the raw file in post-production, and I adjust exposure compensation. At f4, you still have sufficient depth of field with micro four-thirds, and I shot everything on the program mode. After the castle visit, my plan was to walk to Cardiff Bay on the Taff and Bay Trails, catching the train back from Penarth. The wet weather alternative was Clandaff Cathedral. Typically, the weather was neither one thing or the other. Cloudy, but no rain and very little sun. Perfect inside the castle, not so good for landscapes. I decided on the walk as I was curious to see how Cardiff Docks had been redeveloped into a fashionable area of shops and high-rise hotels. Some historic features are preserved, and in its heyday, the port was handling more coal than any other port in the world, but by the 1980s it had become neglected. For those who know the area well, I would imagine much has changed. Whilst most of the images are fine for YouTube, they are not very commercial, particularly for calendars, unless you produce your own 
and as both are part of my professional output, I might give it a try. Weather is in charge of most landscape work, and as a result, my photography has been described from gloomy through to oversaturated courtesy of Photoshop when things don't work out. Therefore, if you prefer something moody, you're in luck. The sun made a few fleeting appearances, but not enough to make a difference to my commercial preference. I completed the walk and was intrigued by the Barrage Bridge, instrumental in transforming the area. And is that the Waverley steamer I see in the distance in the Bristol Channel? Probably heading for Panath Pier. In total, I had walked 14 miles that day, assuming my iPhone to be accurate. But the next day, I enjoyed at home an extended snooze on the settee.